Hello, everybody, and welcome to D in Denial. Tonight is the Moonstone Matriarchy, um, an all-girl campaign with strong, powerful, sexy women, both inside and out of the uh, campaign, the setting, the world, the the screen, really. Um, I'm your shenanigans sovereign, uh, aka I sneeze stars, and or Jessica, if you prefer. Um, quickly, I'm going to run you through our uh, schedule, and um, then we have some other stuff that we're going to talk to you about. So, Monday nights, we have the Iowan Adventures at 7.30 p.m. EST, damned by myself. Um, with our honorary Moonstone Matriarchy player and our tech wizard, uh, the Speed of Candy. Uh, Tuesday nights, we have State of the Union, a Shadowrun campaign at 7.30 p.m. EST, GM'd by Coddlesworth and featuring myself and Katie. Uh, Thursday nights, we have The Lost Continent at 8 p.m. EST, DM'd by Mr. Markham. Friday nights, we have The Legends of Kralis at 11 p.m. EST, a TTRPG created and GM'd by Telerius Game Master. Um, and obviously tonight's the, the Moonstone Matriarchy. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our YouTube and our TikTok and, I don't know, join our Discord or something. Because uh, we're around. Um, let's go with June. Would you like to introduce yourself and your character? Me? Um, hello, I'm Juniper. I'm Linen and Spice, most places on the internet. Um I am playing Clover tonight, who is our little tabaxi house cat of a cleric. Um, you can find me elsewhere on the internet as well on um, on the Shattered Tabletop Games uh, Twitch channel, the first and third Sundays of the month. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be doing session zero of Naturally Shattered, which is um, we're using the Shattered Dawn system and it's going to be really great. Um, we've already been playing together with that group for a while, but we're just starting a brand new part um, of the story where the world has massively just changed for the worse. So, yeah, come join us tomorrow on Shattered Tabletop Games uh, channel. Um, I also play Alien once a month with them as well on the first Sunday of the month. Um, that's pretty much me. I will pass to star hi i'm star i go by star mama c on tiktok everywhere else you can find me as characters without stories which is the name of my podcast and i am playing cappy who is a heron gone wild magic sorcerer uh was once an elf that might um be handy information for you to know if you didn't already know uh for this episode and um i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna pass it to mama kalik hi I'm Mami Kalik. I play Delphra, a winter Eladrin druid um, that basically causes shit and needs a leash. Um, 
further than that, I I no longer live under a rock. Uh, you can find me on social media now. Um, Goddess Teacup is up and running. It is a herbal hypothecary. Hypo- uh, and we will be sharing some exciting stuff about herbs and fully selling products by June. Um, so check it out. We're on Instagram and Facebook. Scarlett. Hello, I'm Scarlett64, and I'm going to be playing our favorite sad elf, Sin, the Warlock. Um, you can find me playing various games here on Twitch. Uh, I run a long term campaign every Sunday. I'm also uh, participating in the State of the Union uh, on Tuesdays. <laughs> you get used to it eventually yeah i'm sorry i'm I'm a temporary uh cast member for this arc so it's okay it's okay uh and i also sometimes play uh or host one shots on uh thursdays i'm the mother of dessert dragons and you can get all my cute dragon prints and stickers on my shop and uh take it away gm of revan Hi everybody, I'm GM of Revan, you can call me in, and I play games Tuesdays and Fridays, and I am here Saturdays with the best group of lovely, amazing, powerful, strong, um, gorgeous, hot women that you can never find on the internet, because we are very, very hot, and we play some very, very good looking characters. Let me just tell you, you. we have the best looking characters, um, this side of femme you'll ever see, maybe. Truth. Truth. Facts. Facts. Yes. yes. Truth. Yes. Um, take it away. Clover. No, wait. Clover did. No, we all did. Clover did. We all did. No, no, yes. no. Dungeon Mistress Katie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Katie, <laughs> you're <laughs> I have to do a thing. Um, so, yes, I am Katie. I'm Dungeon Mistress Katie on all of the internet spaces. Um, as Jess said, you can find me here on Tuesdays as well as today. Uh, these days, these Saturdays. Um, and I'm also on Shadows of Nox every other Wednesday. Um, and I will be, I think we decided starting February 13th, I think, um, is when we're going to drop the little mini Buffy the Vampire Slayer RPG. Um, I'm playing the Slayer of the group. Her name is Fiona. And it's so much fun. Oh my God, it's so good. Um, it's like a six- Four, I think it's a four episode uh, little mini mini campaign that we're currently currently doing. And uh, that'll drop on the 13th. And it's so good. I'm so excited. And uh, then I'll be starting in February, A Call of Cthulhu on Shadows of Nox um, for like a few months. So I'm doing all the things. And so I will be doing all those things. And if I'm not here, if I'm not on the Switch space, I'm probably singing. Um in some operas or some musicals or some shit so that's what i do um do we have anybody left i don't think so nope. i think you're the last one great so um yay. before you get into your recap yeah, absolutely uh star yes uh so i want to tell you about a charitable charitable drive that we're doing uh this is organized by run dmg on tiktok and a bunch of other amazing tiktok creators god what how many of i think there's like 75 of us now um it's an amazing group an amazing um and it's an amazing charity we're supporting doctors without borders to give relief to the people of gaza i don't know if you've heard but they now have zero hospitals in gaza Um, Doctors Without Borders is providing desperately needed medical care for a population that is really suffering right now, and you can help. So uh, you can go to the Tiltify and you can donate, and we'll go ahead and drop a link in there. Um, We have two teams. And unfortunately, um, me and uh, I Sneeze Stars uh, and the DN Denial group are on opposite teams. So it is what it is, you know? <laughs> so if you love Cappy, go ahead when you donate and leave a comment to, that you support but the red if team. If you love <laughs> the person who makes the game and made this channel, just saying support the green team. Okay. I, I have no hope. Of, of beating <laughs> out Ice Knee Stars in the DN Denial channel, I am well aware. But that's okay, because the red team is winning, so, you know. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter anyway. It's for the... It's, <laughs> it's, for the it's all cha- for good cause. Charity. Um, whatever. I'm not, you know, 
competitive uh vote green <laughs> all that stuff um vote green uh green team um also uh from now and until the the charity ends um we will be dedicating all of our streams to this so uh yeah we'll be we'll be talking about it a lot more um and mentioning and putting out the links every every game just so you're aware uh yeah. oh i'll also mention i didn't mention but when we started the campaign we were at fifteen hundred dollars was our goal our goal is yeah. now sixteen thousand dollars we, we just, just beat, passed 13 yeah thirteen thousand yeah. was our Holy goal for moly. today and we just crushed it so it, we're That's we're raising wild. a lot of money not gonna lie oh, I, I saw us getting like we were so close to that and i was like okay let's do this yeah. and i'm like <laughs> let's push it over and i was like yeah hey guys guess what <laughs> yeah but it, it's so like it's so exciting mm. um yeah please donate if you can um if you can't take the links and just share them because uh we really need to raise more awareness cuz something has to be done obviously um with that uh Katie recap yes yes i have that right here in my notebook okay <clears throat> previously on the moonstone matriarchy the moonlings have breakfast as a group for the first time this includes uh their new kind of new friends if friends being question mark um but we did have a breakfast as a group uh fleety brought a damn feast for cappy but since the group has very complicated feelings about both Fleety and Fey food in general, um, only a few of them ate the food. The group has been mourning the loss of the Morose and carried that over as they traveled towards Ambrosa. Cappy rides her jealous boyfriend into the distance, the tears of obsidian falling down like rain. <laughs> <laughs> as they enter the Black Spire, the party learns that the country was cursed when the prince started meddling in dark magic. This is kind of new information. It's kind of not new information, but it is information we were at least reminded of. The party meets Lady, Ser Lady Seraph, um, and Lady Orion loses her temper and almost kills Sin. After a little bit of diplomacy from Clover and Roz, they move on to the sixth floor of the Black Spire, where there is a dinner happening. As they're walking through the door, the party meets Cappy's brothers, who are excitable, um, but miss their sister. And then they see her mother, a.k.a. the BBEG, uh, for the first time. <laughs> we hate her. Um, Cappy's mom is called the Fey Blade, and it is pretty well understood that she is hated a lot, just, just across the board. For whatever reason, they keep her around, but people don't like her. So they're correct. Um, we have learned that the party was lied to. Luna is not as benevolent as we thought. The prince feels incredible sorrow for what he's done, and Nyx might be the good guy. Question mark. Also, Rosalind's tits have the power to seduce the hottest prince in the land. Hey. And here we are. <laughs> uh, and here we are. That was good. Thank you. That Thank was you. a good recap. <laughs> um, let's see here. Where did I have us starting off? I, I, okay. I will be I will be right back 30 seconds. Please stop yeah. that we Okay. So um we're actually starting from the night before anyway, so that's <laughs> fine. Um, uh, Rosalind. Yes. As you spend a wonderful night with the prince, you, uh, I'm assuming, fall asleep there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So in the velvet embrace of the night, yeah. um, in the prince's plush bed, after having been through a... After have, having been just thoroughly exhausted, um, you succumb to a deep slumber. Um, drawn into a dreamscape where shadows weave tales of divine intrigue. Um, the air is thick with an ethereal mist of some sort. You're walking through it and you can't quite see where you are going. Um, and the celestial canvas above you is adorned with 
an array of stars that seem to dance to almost a silent melody. It's very picturesque and beautiful. Um, amidst this astral dreamscape, a presence materializes. A very familiar presence. One cloaked in shadows that seem to just respond to her every whim. Nixaria. Oh, good. Her toxic orange eyes see you and almost light up when she notices that you recognize who she is. And she weaves a hand and the scene changes to one of an elegant but um, comfortable sitting room. Gracefully, she walks over to the chaise there and drapes herself upon it. Hello, Rosalind. Please, sit, darling. Uh, Roz will sit. Where? Wait. You're going to go sit on another couch? You're going to sit at the end of the chaise? How far gonna, or close are you? Uh, I think she would sit on a couch. Just uh, sort of perch on the couch. Uh, she's not, you know, I'm assuming this is like a lucid dream where she can make decisions. She's not sort of like things aren't chosen for her. Your, things are not being chosen for you. It is okay. a meeting, a meeting spot of sorts. Okay. Um, yeah. So she's not, she's hesitant because um, it has been deeply ingrained in her that Nyx is not to be trusted. But after the last evening and, um, you know, this last night, um, clearly there are some folks that do trust her that aren't bad people. So mm -hmm. her information that she thought she knew for all those years is definitely being challenged right now. Um, so she's not opposed to having a meeting with her, but she's still kind of hesitant because of pre-ingrained information if that makes sense. So yeah. she'll sit on the couch um, just very hesitantly and as neutral of an expression on her face as she can muster. Well, you look lovely tonight. And she kind of does a little gesture with her hand, uh, circles her wrist, and a wine glass appears with this yellow um, shifting liquid that turns between this golden color and silver. Um, and then she offers it to you. She'll take the drink. She's not going to drink it yet, She'll, but she'll hold on to it for a little while. She makes the same motion and another one appears for herself. She takes a sip of it, reclines back. I thought we could have a chat. Now are you, sweetling? Uh, I'm okay. Um... I wasn't expecting to have this conversation. <laughs> so I'm just a tiny bit taken by surprise. But I'm I'm okay. I'm doing I was it's been an interesting twenty four hours. It has, has it? Care to share? <laughs> she takes another drink. Well, um I um what well, your prince is a charming fellow he's a good boy isn't he yeah <laughs> yeah um <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he 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 seems he seems like it. Um so uh, he, um we were talking. Um so I don't know if you've been were you? I don't mean him and me. We were uh, oh, uh, okay. uh but earlier before before that. Um we as a group were talking. Um 
and uh, it it appears that we have been led to believe some things that might not be entirely true about you. Well, I could have told you that, but that's all right. I understand. It's hard to trust a god. I mean, I am larger than life. And if in a second you kind of blink and she's sitting next to you on that couch. Oh, great. Taking um, a sip of her wine. She's... Which she looks at you, her eyes flick down to the wine glass, looks back up at you. I'll, I'll take a drink of the wine glass. It is the best thing you have ever tasted in your entire life. Yeah. And um, for this next 24 hours in the game, um, you can roll with advantage. <laughs> as... I love the shit. <laughs> she looks at you and she goes, Sell on your soul. Sell on your soul. Ambrosia, Honestly, darling. Luna didn't really have my soul before. We'll be very clear. She was on the edge of soul having moments. Um, go ahead. I'm I sorry. feel like you're about to sell your soul to Ursula right now. <laughs> I know you're about to but take, as long a level as take my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not opposed to it, honestly. Oh, um, no. So, why do the gods, Ambrosia? It's a nice it's, extra kick, isn't it? It's a. It's really good. It's really good. Um, to be completely fair, I haven't, I don't know how much you, so I don't, have you been watching us as a group? From time to time. Because I know you have sin. I know sin, sin is a, something to do with you. I don't know the whole story uh, mm. with sin but I know that she's connected to you in some way. Um, so I'm not sure how much, pay, how much you pay attention. Cause I'm sure there are a lot of people that you have to pay attention to. So, you know, one, one little, one little moonling is probably not uh, someone you pay all of your she time. She stretches at. out and puts her arm around the back of the couch. It kind of leans in towards you a little bit, takes a drink and she goes, I'll tell you something that I haven't told anyone else. Save for Sin. She's my favorite. I mean, she's pretty great. We do really like her. She yeah, is. She's, she's also real hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, I've never fully trusted everything that I have been told. About Luna. That's why I asked if you've been watching, because if you have been watching, you've noticed that I don't pray to her like the other ones do. I know. Yeah, I want I thought you might already know that, but and I can't imagine good people follow someone inherently evil. And Princess seems like a pretty good guy. And yet, not but two weeks ago, he was the villain in everyone's story. It's what happens when one person holds the pen that writes the history. Such a clever girl. She runs a hand through her hair. I knew I liked you for a reason. I want to help you with something, sweet little moonling. What is that? She makes a gesture with her hands and that red little will of the wisp appears in it and then sort of seems to float around nonsensically. Not really here. I just think they're cute. They are cute. 
I forgot about my red freckles. Fuck. It's okay. It's great. okay. <laughs> uh, Sorry. She says that right to Nick. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on one moment. And she snaps her fingers and you have all these red little freckles again. My apologies. Oh, because it's in a dream. So she wouldn't. Yes. Okay. So, I you, you know, you might have not had them. Uh, seeing I the can... will of the wisp just makes her so happy. It floats around and then comes to land on your shoulder. And sort of just rocks there. Uh, well, my little moonling, I can give you something that you want. Something that you want more than anything else in the world. Anything on Astelia. Wouldn't that be... Something nice, a nice little gift for you. I don't really need things. I know. I have, I have things that, that you need, that I need. Someone, best friend, perhaps, lost in the land of the dead. <laughs> Gonna make me cry. It, we are 15 minutes in. <laughs> well done, on, Jess. No. Well done. You know, a child's death is a horrible thing. Something that I, I would stop if I could. It's a crime yeah. against nature itself. And if I had my way, no children would ever perish. Um, she, she, she didn't have to die. No, she didn't. But you couldn't have done anything differently. You were a child, my sweet little moonling. And she, um, her arm wraps around you, the one that was behind the couch, and she runs a hand through your hair again. We could make it right. You and I. But how about this? Let's start with a friendship and go from there, Petal. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that. She hugs you. What do you do? Do you just sit there stunned? She'll hug her back. She runs a hand through your hair. She comforts you as you cry. Yeah. And she says... Drink the ambrosia, and when you wake in the morning, all of this will feel much better. Call me, Rosalind. Should you need something? And she'll sit with you and... Put her arm around you and let you drink your drink and comfort you. And um, in the meantime, show you happy memories that you have of your friend, you and her playing together, doing the most ridiculous little things, stealing your father's shoes and <laughs> filling them up with sand because he hates the feeling of sand in his shoes. Um that you, might be a little autistic, and it's okay. It's where I get it from. It's fine. You know, uh, you <laughs> stole your mother's dresses 
and would dress in them and tie the the waist tights so that they would fit you in weird little ways. And you remember so many times your father walked in on you uh, seeing that you guys were dressed in all of these um, really nice outfits that they <laughs> definitely, you know, had to save to get and just turned around and walked away. And and so just, you know, if I didn't see it, it's not the issue. Um, you remember your mom learning to do uh, your, it's Vex, right? Was uh, that Val, a Dax? I think. Val. It's Val. I think yes, Val, Dax. Val. Yeah, I have. Uh, you remember your mom. I was like, I've been watching a lot of Critical Role, maybe. Yes, that's what. <laughs> um, you remember your mom learning to braid um, hair specifically for her hair type because she is um, of a darker complexion and her hair was not something your mother had ever dealt with, but she didn't have parents that could take care of her properly. You know, she was often at your house, um, ate there, slept there, and your parents both just took her in. Even your dad, who as much of an asshole and a piece of shit that he has become, he treated her well. Um, and that's how you spend your night. Drinking until the pain is gone and there's just happy. And you feel a peace. Um... In the morning, you wake up, or you begin to wake up, in a very comfortable bed. Um, what do you do as you begin to awake? You're just going to lay there? Um, <clears throat> is there anything that would indicate that my dream was not a dream? Your dream was not a dream. Because um, she would you... be able she would be able to like talk herself out of believing that that was true unless there was some sort of physical manifestation you will have to right now you're still in bed okay so you were just waking up you're not sure maybe that was just a dream maybe it was something that your mind put together with all of the information and being in a place that i mean umber fell was a land of the dead in the living you know all they all worshipped the dead and had a whole bunch of different customs and rituals and you know ways to bring the dead back from the living to do this to do that you, or, you know bring the dead back eh. um what what are you doing um, are you immediately like getting out of bed no she'll I'm assuming the prince is, is the prince in bed with me still, or did he get up? You feel two arms also, wrapped what is around his first you. name? The prince? <laughs> his, his name is Eldrion. Eldrion. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. I like that name. Um, um, <laughs> you, have, you have two arms wrapped around you, oh. and as you come to, you feel that his face is kind of buried in your hair, uh, like right next to your head. I love um, him. He's he's breathing rhythmically. You're warm. You're comfortable. You're safe. I'm not That's getting how out of bed anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, burrow, snuggle in better. You burrow and snuggle in better. Uh, and he you end up he ends up pulling you tightly and more into him, and he's still asleep. Um, give me a perception check as that happens. Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen. That's, that's good enough. You saw it last night, too. And as he pulls you in uh, closer, I mean, obviously, you don't have clothing on, so you're right up against his chest. Uh, there is... You feel it. Um, there <laughs> do is I? This, I? You feel, I it. feel it. You do. <laughs> you do feel it. Um, but what you do, what you are feeling is this large circular scar that he has in the middle of his chest um, that is slightly blackened is it um, you said centered like like sternomy area not like his heart. like 
right where his heart is yeah in that area um okay that's something you obviously saw last night but you were not going to mention at the time sure um but and when you get pulled into it i mean you feel the texture but you also feel that it's a lot colder than the rest of his body um as you lay there i'll describe the room that you're in because you went to the ninth level of this spire and tucked away on the ninth level of this spire is um the prince's sanctum around you as you open your eyes and look around is the first thing that you're going to notice is the actual smell uh in the room and it's a very heady fragrance fragrance of black orchids that hangs in the air um Intensive, it kind of like intensifies the just allure of the space. It's it's a nice smell. Um, you are laying in a four postered bed, crafted of dark mahogany with um, intricate carvings everywhere. The lush canopy is draped with very soft uh, fabrics, while the headboard the headboard is embroidered um, and adorned with the royal crest of Tim Tembrosa. Um, it just exudes, it, I mean, money and wealth and authority. His room is obviously the room of a prince. Plush pillows and a very sumptuous bedding create a haven of comfort for you. Um and looking around the room a little bit more, your gaze is immediately drawn to the opulent decor um, that defines this chamber. Onyx statues stand as silent sentinels in the room. Uh, while the flickering of light of from dim candles imparts a very soft glow, um, you see a secluded study with towering bookshelves uh, that ascend straight to the ceiling where there is a very celestial motif of constellations and magic that makes the stars there um it's a very intimate retrieve uh, uh retreat for him there's a grand mahogany desk adorned with a bunch of arcane tomes scrolls uh alchemical instruments kind of all over the place um yeah that is where you are what do you do um i think she'll stay for a little while just really drinking in everything that's around her and the feeling of all of this um, after after about like maybe five ten minutes of this yeah you hear him sigh he you get, you get a kiss on the top of your uh head where his head is just buried in your hair <laughs> and he goes you think very loudly you think very loudly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did he just pull an <clears throat> Edward Cullen? <laughs> do you want to do you want to roll an insight and see if he can actually hear yeah, what you're thinking? For sure. Didn't occur to me he would have like minor that's a 17. 17. He has no clue. You just have pensive face as you're yeah. sitting there and he's you know, like you're but you're stiffer a little bit more. Like he just realized it and he's like you think very loudly. Yeah. Um, I had a really interesting dream last night. Um, but so I have a lot to think about today. But at the same time, this is the best feeling I have had in a long time. He pulls you as close to his chest as he can, and you feel him stretch. He's like, I 
very much agree with that statement. And I think what would make it better, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Listen, I just had a date. Okay. Come on. Give me a, give me a break. If, if that was a date, then uh, you have been sorely mistreated by most men or women. <laughs> um, <clears throat> why don't you come and have a bath with me? And in the corner of his room, is a large and very luxurious bathroom with a huge tub. Mm. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I'm here for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from there, as you <laughs> slip into the warm water with him, uh, we're going to rewind just a little bit uh, and head to Sin. I'll be right back now that that's over. Right back. Sin. You went to bed for the night? Um, I think Sin would have uh, gotten a hold of any books from the library she would be allowed to take and would have spent the whole night just poring over tomes and scrolls and records looking for any mention, evidence, anything about lunar eclipses, uh, just kind of like this event that's taking place, rituals that ha are, are often performed under it, any any records of the last time it happened. Uh, let she's me, just let going me crazy. Let me interrupt you before you even do that, because there is someone you will have to get past to do that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and we that's don't know if she's to going to help you yet. Okay. She will eventually, um, because that's her job. But Okay. Um, you go to, you go to, you're going to go to the library. You aren't yes. going to make it into the library because outside of the library, as she seems to be almost locking up for the night, yes. um, is the redhead that went to go and sit near the prince and then saw that Rosalind was there and kind of looked confused and then went and sat further down the table. Mm -hmm. um, she has this long wavy red hair and these bright green eyes pale as pale can be but rosy cheeks that you know kind of match the color of her hair and the same for her lips she's got these uh gold rimmed glasses on um and she's been locking up she turns around she sees you and she goes oh hi uh, we were point. We were told all of their names at the table, right? Like you were, name. yes. That um, is Galen, right? Galen, uh, de Heis, de Heis, de Heis, de Heis. Um, was I told what her official, like, royal title was? No. Okay. Um, because I don't want to call her by the wrong honorific. Uh, so, uh. She'll turn around, I guess. Uh, hello. I see you are closing up for the night. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Galen. It's very nice to meet you. Uh, you I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Oh, it is no trouble at all. Um, I am Aurora. Aurora. Oh, that's really pretty. Um, what can I do for you? I, I was hoping to get some something to read for the night, um, a history book or something. I'm I'm not sure. Is the library open to guests or is it private? Well, we don't have many guests, and yes, we kind of. Well, you need permission from. The prince uh and then if he says yes i can help you with whatever you're looking for i i i um i'm the keeper of the um forbidden tombs and stuff so the keeper tomb, of stuff. the forbidden tombs a grand librarian yes yeah actually that is what i am it's nice that someone finally understands that my parents are our librarians it, it's a very important and honorable position really that's... of course 
That's so cool. Wait. In oh wait, I know this. I know this. Uh Moon's Moon Shadow had the place, right? Yes. Yes. I was wanted library. to go there. You haven't been. It isn't that far. Uh well, I'm actually younger than the prince, so um oh. I never <laughs> got a chance to travel before all of this happened. I must say, grand librarians are usually quite ancient. Just ask my parents. So it must be very impressive for you to gain such a station at such a young age. She looks really sad. I'm oh. I'm kind of all who's left. So, and um, uh, I kind of got the title because, well, I'm the only other royal left, sort of. Um, the prince is my cousin. Oh, my lady. And she's going to, like, remember her. Oh, no, don't. Please, please don't do that. <laughs> I like to be in with my books because people don't do that. No one does that here anymore because we're all that's really left that we talk to. So but. I understand. I apologize. Um, I don't know. It might be too late for me to ask for permission. I saw the prince uh, heading to bed with one of my comrades um oh oh the, the pretty one with the white hair the right? one with the best boobs yes um she does have yes famously she, yes, that, it's it's uh, um however i was wondering then perhaps it wouldn't be out of pocket to at least request perhaps um a religious text i know that the Customs in this country are different than in mine. Uh, nothing forbidden. I wouldn't want to get you in trouble. Just the whatever holy book your average Tembrosian family would keep on their mantle. I would very much like to read. Um, I mean, es essentially the Tembrosian version of, yeah, of a like, King James Bible. <laughs> she knows exactly what you're asking for, but she looks and she goes. Oh, Rura, this is all we have left. We don't just hand them out. Um, I really would feel better if I could get permission first, and then and then you can look at anything that you need, and I can uh, I can help. Um, yes, I, I understand. Just, it's one of those things. It's if we lose it. No, no, I un the, look. Daughter of grand librarians. My parents are very, very, very careful with who they lend their books to. Um, I would ask to sit and read them in the library if I didn't notice you were heading to bed. So I will get permission in the morning. Um, I could. Uh, we have we have fiction that I feel less bad about giving out, but also please don't tell anyone that I I gave it out without letting without permission. If that's that's okay. You know what. Sure, I would love to see what Tembrosa has to offer in the terms of the fiction. Okay, as she opens the library back up. Like, you can tell that she really didn't want to get in trouble, but she also didn't want to let you down at I all. I just, I unlocked her special interest. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, I'm going to make friends with this girl. She's a people pleaser. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As um, she, um, I do think I'm, I'm not going to try to steal anything, but I am going to glance around and get a gauge how many of these books would be familiar because I, I feel like I would know all the biggest hits and typical books uh, where I'm from. I want to kind of get a sweep on how different the collection is in comparison. Like, are these books I've never heard of topics that are I would consider unique or is this like a pretty standard run of the mill like oh yeah I've definitely read that at one point or oh they have the full collection of this art uh, author's works that's good on them give me a perception so it check. definitely sounded like you said you would know all of the biggest tits I do know the biggest <laughs> tits she's in the no, that you would the know right now that you would know hey. <laughs> So um, I'm hoping they have an entire smut shelf from Marilyn Merrymaker. Like I was just, I was just typing that. that. <laughs> I, I rolled very poorly. I almost got a, a good roll, but it it kind of 
cocked over to it cocked over to uh eight. an eight so <laughs> an eight um yeah. you know what what's your passive because i won't give you i won't give you a bunch but i'll give you some 11, titles that you see 11. 11 that's that's better you're okay you're used to libraries you kind of know what to scan here and there there are a bunch of uh you do see a bunch of religious texts you can't make out kind of what they say right now because they are very old do they look kind of like Nixarian type of religious texts that are unfamiliar to me? I don't know or... if you would know what that would look like. Right. I think I would know what Luna texts yeah. would look like, though. So am I seeing Luna stuff at all? Or is this like, um, is this like yes. a Mormon girl walking you do through see a Luna Buddhist stuff. bookstore? There is, there is Luna literature here. There is okay. a lot of literature about your religion. Um, nothing recent, because after a while it got... You know, that's not something that came into this place. But there okay. is still, like, they... And you see other religions as well. Um, okay. Like, from... There's a bunch of tribes from uh, from the... Shit, what's the lands called that I made for you? It ended. Terramora. Terramora, yes, oh. Terramora. <laughs> okay, there's a bunch... They have a whole bunch of different gods that they worship to. I mean, you saw one ritual already. Um but you are led to what's closer to the um where her workstation would be um and there are a bunch of books that you see the titles of uh something called shadows of the past by alara nightshade there are whispers of umberfell by uh malachi darkbane there are um, there's an arcane codex Forgotten Spells by Serafina Moonshadow. Um, Veil Weaver's Journals by Morgan Hollowshade. Lament of the Banshee by Isol Isol the Isol if, if fucking words tonight. Isolde? No. Oh that's how you like, say I that. Love that name. It's is it's spa somebody say yes, no, it is. Somebody say the name Isol? for me. Isol. Isol? Isol? Isol. Isol. Thank you. Isol? I struggled right now. I just lost all ability to read. It's okay. You're good. I, it's okay. No, no. It's just, oh, brain went not happening. Uh, Nightshade, by the way. Chronicles of Ethereal Beasts by Silvaris Stormcaller. Um, there are Tales from the Abyssal Abyss by that, that uh, Abyssal Velthorn. Abyss. What's happening? <laughs> uh <laughs> Velther Darkheart, uh, Lost Runes of Shadow by Thaldrin Weaver, The Enigma Codex by Grim Thistlebane, um, Ephemeral L G L G, yes, uh, by Sylvia Thistledown, and Celestial Cartography by uh, someone called Brother Oswald, and one last one, Visions of Desolation by Lilith Darkwater. Roll me a history check okay i know i know i'm not in the room but didn't we meet all of them at dinner like all of those people or well, most of them yeah, i don't some know of those names look a little sound a little familiar do they you met some of them yeah i got a nat one a nat one oh. i mean you can't remember anyone's names right now just uh, fyi because you've already the group is like didn't we meet some of them yes you did but um you missed something else, so that's fine. Uh, uh, I definitely think that the last two. Uh, do I need to? Is the, do I need to have written that whole list down as a player? There is that was a lot. The list, the list is in the shopping section. Oh, sick. Um, things okay. that that Galen can give you. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. That and makes so a annoyed. Lot I was just madly sense. typing that entire list. I'm so annoyed. I started <laughs> to, and then I just put my pen I down. give you, I give you guys shit. I oh, literally I had it open the minute you started going off, and I was so, like, following. Yeah, <laughs> celestial cartography and visions of desolation definitely catch uh, Sin's eye, but she wants to be very respectful of. Um, These are things that she's willing to let you to give you. Um, oh. to read because there are things that she uh again a lot of them were written by people in the castle like thing they have nothing to do in here all right um, oswald oh that's that hot uh 
Yeah, I remember uh, tattoos brother. and all. Yeah, yeah, I remember Brother Oswald. Ooh, I'll, I'll definitely want to read his book. <laughs> um. So yeah, you can choose something she'll give you tonight, and then uh, I'll give you like, yeah, I'll I'll actually write you a little blurb. Later. I love this. Okay, actually, so if I'm gonna pick one, because I'm sure she doesn't have enough you time can, to you do everything. You can choose as many as you like from there. And if you are interested in anything that you are specifically looking for, um, we will talk afterwards, any of you, okay. and I will create a book for you that she can help you find. Um, well, you're the best. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I think then for just the evening, she'll be respectful and just borrow one of the books so that she doesn't like give poor Galen a heart attack. Uh, I think she'll take Shadows of the Past. That one looks relevant to what she's trying to figure out. Uh, either. Yeah, okay. So she'll borrow uh, Shadows of the Past and maybe ask if they have any like notebooks she can buy to take notes in. <laughs> You know, like oh, hey, I have, I have a lot of those. I can give you some. It's, that's oh, okay. I would love, I would love to have some scrolls and some extra. I might need some extra ink. I might need an extra couple candles. The wick's gonna be burning long tonight. I, I have. Hang on, wait. And you see her disappear <laughs> into the back room for a second, and she comes out with um just a satchel that she has stuffed to the brim with. Uh, there's a. There's a blank sketchbook in there for you to write in. There's extra pieces of parchment. Um, there's a couple bottles of ink in different colors in case you wanted to make um the color code. Little, little, yeah, exactly. Um, and I I have these <laughs> things that I stick on the sides with some with some glue, and she gives you the glue, and that way you can just like oh, tab that them. Is absolutely um, brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> and like and like extra candles and can a little candle holder for them. Um, yeah, here you go. Oh, Sin is so grateful. And just because uh, Maverick in the chat said it earlier, Sin is not being silver tongued at all. She she loves libraries and no, is not at definitely all. <laughs> enjoying this. Um, no, that was the prince last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us more about <laughs> what is sure. Tell us about his tongue. He made I you know. sing. <laughs> I know. I bet he did. Yeah. Because uh, we were yeah, on the ninth yeah. floor and none of you would have slept. Sin is absolutely <laughs> stocking up on anything she can get. She's going to like just. There are rulers, like anything you need. Oh, she is going <laughs> to. She would just stay in here, but she wants to also let Galen go to bed. So she's going to take it to her room. She's going to profusely thank her for all of her help and just like it be so, so much gratitude. And then she will spend basically. Well, she she goes into trance. She doesn't need more than four hours of sleep. She is going to so so she's going to study all she can, and for her four hours of trance, she's going to uh, go restudy. Uh, for those of you who don't know how trance works, it's not really like a sleep. It's like lucid dreaming, mm -hmm. uh, but with like complete control. And elves will often use it to revisit uh, lessons or like sit through because they can recall perfectly whatever it is they're trying to recall so they'll often revisit a training session or sit through a lecture that they had to like take it it's like really neat so she's gonna like be in study mode she's gonna study and then she's going to trance about studying uh <laughs> um <laughs> as uh before you leave she she goes and i'll 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 make sure that i talk to um to Eldrion. For you in the morning after after breakfast because he gets hangry so um but yeah. yes thank okay. you so much it is uh. so real <laughs> uh and then you go to your room and you begin to do that can you roll me a d20 for no uh -huh. reason whatsoever absolutely I'm no reason i'm go. i'm seeing how much of these new runes that you're beginning to understand oh this is written in another language yes it's oh. it's a maybe I should have uh, Latin borrowed language a, of shadows. Oh, maybe I should have borrowed a, a translation. Or there is there are ways that like the, this whole book is it's a I nice have tome. a spell called comprehend languages. Okay. I can understand any written language that you see, but I must be touching the surface on the which the words are written. It takes one minute to read one page of text, so. I can read slower than if I was fluent, but uh -huh. I could, it, for at least an hour, I could... Uh, you start making your own codex for yourself. 
I only <laughs> because I only have two spells at a time. I guess yeah. this is what I would do all night. I would spend two hours studying, then I would take a short rest in my room to to get my warlock spells 100%. back. And then I so that would be how I spend my whole night is with comprehend languages, studying like crazy. I will roll a d20. I got an 11. Um, I'm so happy I took that spell. I was kind of scratching my head like, I don't know if I should have taken this spell because it's so niche. And now I get to use it all night. Oh, it's per you are you're making your own codex reading and doing that. But you notice with an 11, um, while you're still able to read it, it seems like these these um, runes themselves almost change a little bit as you read them. They kind of shift uh, like shadows do Ooh, uh, it makes it a little Ooh, bit difficult um i think the nerd in her would while it's tricky just is kind of like wow what a clever way of using syntax never put up <laughs> that that is well the way the letters switch as you move it's the candlelight flickers oh that's so interesting it, it, it puts so much context behind the words that i don't think i would have gotten with a regular alphabet um while you trance, though, you are revisiting one of your lessons. Um, what what lesson do you think you're in right now? I think she would be in that very evening. She would be remaining. She would probably visit the dinner party that they just had. Not the dinner party, but like the dinner to try to catch any information she might have missed any notice that re-notice anything almost like watching a video of uh, an event that you were at or listening to a lecture notes she would do that and then she would also just revisit that exact same night so she can reread what she read to just <laughs> try yeah she's just like she's okay she's so funny. you're sitting at the dinner table watching things um, unfold again listening to all of these things you're watching the prince and then you turn to your left and the person that was sitting there isn't sitting there anymore nixaria has also paid you a visit a visit tonight that is such a jump scare like oh my uh -huh. gosh have you seen her face she's got big orange eyes and you just look at her and you're like jesus fucking christ <laughs> <laughs> to be fair i feel like it's similar she's to like uncanny valley beautiful yeah and to like add to that and then girl. the glowing yeah and, and a little smile like hello Hi. <laughs> like, oh, this is trances are sacred you don't come into people's trances <laughs> how rude it was rude wasn't it can i help mm. you Ever, ever gracious, I see. I've learned it from the best. Absolutely not. Your parents are much more graceful and I gracious was... and better hosts. I mean... How would you know how good of hosts my parents are? Shh. That's a secret. We won't tell. <laughs> <laughs> You're so boring, Sing. She's got a I'm new play thing. Sorry, I don't have time to be entertaining. We have all the time in the world. You're in a trance. Time yes. works differently when I show up. What do you want? Oh, well, your friendship, ah, uh, the death of my sister. Freedom, um, goodwill on Estelia, and I don't know, children never die. Some children stay children forever because it's cute and they have big eyes. Um, fluffy kittens. You are trapped right now, aren't you? Yes, of course I am. Where? Oh. <gasps> In my own mind, because I can't think of anything else but you. She rolls her eyes so loudly. <laughs> you can hear it. Hear it. Yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> you can hear her rolling her eyes. 
I do adore you so very much, my dear little moonling. I You're love my you. favorite. And she reaches out and kind of boops your nose. It's just straight. But you are trying my patience, Aurora. I bet I am. Does mm. that mean I'm getting close? Am I finding out information that's scary to you? She smiles. Why would you think that? No. You are on my last nerve. I have been nothing but benevolent towards you. I have answered every one of your pleas for help. When my sister ignored you, would have let your little sweet niece die. And still, you treat me so poorly. What more do you want from me? I want you to accept your role. What role? Love me, damn it. Leave me alone. That one right there. Leave Why me alone. Why would you love me? Why? I, mean, I, mean, I love me. So uh, yeah, if you get I mean, this I'll one be. time. Can I just say the parallel is like Sin and Nyx had a one night stand and Sin woke up and was like, <laughs> what have I done? I was just broken up with my boyfriend for one day and I need to go back. And Nyx is like, it, it meant have something consequences. to me. It Nyx has been blowing up your phone ever since. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it, was a, it was a one night stand. But it was more than one night to me. Yeah. Oh, 72 God. messages. <laughs> I know. She's like, leave me, just leave me alone. Stop waking me up. Stop talking to me. Stop smirking at me all the time and making fun of the fact that Luna doesn't talk to me anymore. <sighs> she doesn't all say that. That was all above table, by the way. Uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, I, I know. Okay, okay. Making sure, because I I don't think Sin would have the balls to say any of that. <laughs> what does Sin say? Um... I asked, uh, oh, she said role, and she, so she's going to be like, what role is that? I don't think Sid knows why Nyx is so um, so eager to keep a leash on her. She uh, resents that very much. The role you accepted when you accepted my help. I'm your patron. You will use my magic. You will spread my word. I don't even know what your word is. I don't know your doctrine. I don't know your tenets, your goals. Oh, well. It's almost like you don't have access to those things. Especially, you know, my high priestess. That's, she's been gone for years, so how could you possibly ask her a single question? Why did you abandon her? She's your high priestess. Why is she not your favorite? Did I abandon her? Seems that like that. what she that. told you? She hasn't said anything. It was a conclusion I came to on my own. Okay, well... If you continue this way, I'm going to be a lot less pleasant, <clears throat> my sweet little moonling. We could have a good relationship, or we can go down the road you want to go down. The only road I'm trying to go down is to make sure my family doesn't get destroyed in whatever ritual you are pursuing. Ritual? Ooh. No. Well. 
Get in my way, and I will destroy them, that is. And then she's gone. And um, <sighs> you wake up with a gentle knock on your door. But I think she's um, gonna... we will call it here. I said we would take a break. So oh, uh, we're going to take a five minute break and then we will be right back. Before we take a break, though, uh, Star. Can you talk about our thing? <laughs> Absolutely. So for those of you who are just joining, um, we are uh, uh, Ice Knee Stars and uh, Dean Denial in general are all banding together to support a campaign that was started by Run DMG of T uh, TTRPG TikTokers supporting Doctors Without Borders in order to give relief to the people of Gaza who are currently suffering and have no hospitals, no doctors. So um, we are raising funds to help with that. And we started with the goal of 1500. We are now at a goal of 16,000. We just reached our goal earlier today of 13,000 and we're stretching it even further. There are many wonderful creators who have offered amazing rewards that you can pick from. I know that uh, we have some rewards from, from uh, The Speed of Candy. And um, you can go to the link posted and donate to the Tiltify campaign. And uh, I am Team Red. Ice Knee Stars is Team Green. Go Team Green! <laughs> Support us both. You can always donate twice, uh, but leave a comment when you donate uh, which team you're supporting. Um, and we really appreciate it. Uh, all right. At there you are. Daniel! Daniel! <laughs> Daniel! Are, did we Hi, we are live. We're back. I forgot what we were doing for about five seconds, even though I was the one that just said, let's go back and play. <laughs> um, really quickly, uh, just a reminder to uh, check out the links that I'm about to pop in our dis uh, Discord, our Twitch, because it is for um, helping Gaza. Uh, it's yes but also only team green it's fine don't worry about it uh go team green um okay i will jump i will jump back into our stuff uh there was a knock at the door um i'm going to jump from you to the last person that does things that had thing happen to them that night uh, or not that night more this morning um uh, Cappy, you awake, and you are not covered in frost. You are comfortable, warm, in your bed, but no frost. Um, what do you do? I think um, as the sun comes in the window, I just put the blanket over my head so only my ears are sticking out and just try and capture this feeling of comfort for a little bit longer um and i will i will stay there until i get too hungry or need to pee too much to get up <laughs> as you are there you're warm everything feels wonderful there is suddenly bang 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 on your door it looks like it's if it's about to get taken off its hinges, and you hear Kapandra. Not that oh, that sounded like your mom, but Kapandra, Gabby, Gabby. Oh my god, Gabby, 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 Kapandra. I like throw the covers off and. Bang, 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 Hi. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Both Hi. your brothers are standing there, Torna and Norna. Look, They look like they have been up for a few hours. Definitely already done some training. Good morning, my fluffy little bunny. And that's Torna as he um, bends down and just picks you up. And gives you a little squ like, uh, squish. My favorite, favorite sister in the whole entire everywhere. 
Torna, you. I'm your only sister. Norna looks at you and goes, don't, don't tell him that. He likes to pretend he has other sisters. Uh, okay. And brothers. <clears throat> and another family somewhere. Or actually, maybe that's just what I want. It's okay. Uh, can I roll and an then insight check on that? <laughs> you roll an insight check. 100%. Like, hmm. uh, 19. A 19. He, uh, Norna just got his ass handed to him in training. Mm. Um, You can see he's got a welt coming up on his cheek. And he looks at you and he goes, We say not the face. We say not the face. And every single time... I get a welt and it looks like, like, I know I'm the prettier one, okay? You don't have to tell me. But I think he's taking this to a new a new level. It's personal. And Torna looks, Torna puts you down and he looks at Norna and he goes, you're being traumatic, okay? I just, you didn't block well enough. That's not my fault. That's a you fault. Hmm. <laughs> you guys are already sweaty this early in the morning and you're picking me up and frankly it's kind of gross yeah that's why i hugged you <laughs> what do you want um well fine i mean if you don't want to talk to me that's fine it's like you have been home in a million years but that's cool torna just like he gets he gets really snippy, and then Norna, you see him roll his eyes. And then, out of nowhere, extends his arm, and Torna goes flying out of the doorway, <laughs> sideways, and goes, Well, I had come to see if, you know, my sister wanted to have a conversation with me, because it has actually been a while, and I miss you. So... All right. I would uh, hug you, but I am sweaty. And I also have manners. Oh, all right. Uh, come in. I actually, I had something I wanted to ask you anyways. Can I just come in and Torna can go away? And then Torna's like right beside him again. Hey, I know. Hi. Um, I'm here too. And you'll never get rid of me because we... Well, I mean, you stole my face. <laughs> and then as they as Torna walks in, Norna's like, he was a minute earlier than me. A minute. I didn't steal anything. We are twins. We're supposed to look this way. And he walks in after him. <laughs> Torna has um just taken over your bed and is laying out laying out and in it uh norna is like i know that we were taught manners at some point but apparently that doesn't extend to siblings so and then he jumps on the bed next to nor uh torna um i i go to the doorway and maybe shut it a little too firmly and stand in front of it for a moment uh -oh. Trying to gather my thoughts. You're mad. You make everyone mad, Torna. That's not true. I am charming. Thank you very much. No, you are not charming. You just think you're charming because you're too stupid. Can you shut stupid. up for a second? Yep. Uh huh. Yes, yes, ma'am. And then Torna looks at Norna and goes, ha, 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 ha. So, uh oh. I'll just um cut right to the chase. Uh huh. Yeah. You were there when mother sold me. Wait, and what? This... You were what? there. I no. Hang on. What? What? Norna is up now. Um, I. Cappy, what are you? What are the words that are coming out of your face hole? Um, 
And then Torna is looking at you like he's got his head cocked to the side. Uh, are you, did you get hit in the head? I know that does cause brain damage. That is why I keep hitting Norna in the head. I just, just, what? You don't remember? What are you talking about? I wasn't born yet. And yeah, that's mother... normally how life works. One day you're not here and then you are. Yeah, but after before I was there, mother sold me to an archfey while she was trying to save you two and father and you were not in the womb. You were already children, and you were what? there. Abby, what the fuck? And that's, uh, that's Torna, as he scoots off the bed. I, I don't think you're okay. And then Norna is, Norna is the one who's just a little bit more contemplative, um, a little bit more int intelligent than uh, Torna is. He's looking at you. He goes, I... Cavi, I'm really lost. I know you and Mom don't get along. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. And Torna is like, obviously she's been like cursed again. We need to figure out something how to fix her this time. And... Norna um, just punches him off the bed. Uh, Happy, when did you meet an Archfey? Because uh, if you... Is this... Did something happen? Uh, we can... I mean, we could fight an Archfey. I'm pretty sure we could kill it if it came to the... Uh, you know, I I just I don't understand what is why what I help don't want to kill him because right now he seems to be the only person telling me the truth. Um, Torna, that's Torna standing up. He like gets up from the floor. He looks at you and he goes, <laughs> "Incorrect." Because I'm too dumb to lie. So, <laughs> suck on that. Um, and Norna looks at him and goes, he's not lying. Um, and neither am I. That's rude. Wh whoever this Archfey is, is clearly messing with your mind. And we need to stop them. Why do you think I'm a rabbit? I think you're a rabbit because your magic is unpredictable at times, but we can fix that. And I have offered to help you multiple times. I said we would go on a quest and you said no. And then eventually mom just said that you didn't want to talk to us anymore. So what the, f why are you, I don't understand what's happening right now. Lady, are you here? Roll me a d20. It's gonna be a luck check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, you hear in your ear. I am. I think think I need you right now. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, hello. And out of nowhere, <laughs> um, yeah. Lady appears in all his glory, uh, just floating backwards, arms crossed, elven form, and 
there is no hesitation between him appearing and Torna diving across the room to tackle him. And I'm going to roll to see if I'm going to roll to see who's quicker. Um, can, I, can I try and step between them? Yes. You can, <laughs> you can um, roll interception. How would I, what is interception? What do I roll? I'm for that? just going to go with your dexterity. Okay. Oh, eight. <laughs> eight. Okay. Oh. Here's the thing. So it turns out that Horna rolled a nat one. And Fleety rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> and you rolled an eight? What's it? Yeah. So, <laughs> so good. Here's how this is gonna work out. Um you get you do step in front of them uh, in between this but torna ends up tackling you taking you head over heels tumbling over um fleety and all of you end up on the ground in a pile and norna just laughs <laughs> just to the point where he is bent over. Um, what, I, what I think do? that I think that um, hearing hearing Norna laugh and just being kind of at the bottom of a pile, like this whole like comedic situation. I think I just start laughing too. There's like something cathartic about it. Oh. Um, there- <laughs> Uh, in like as you start laughing um, your brother ends up actually falling on top of you because Fleety has turned into tiny Fleety and just wiggled his way out um, <laughs> getting up going oh back into his elven form oh no we don't do touching <laughs> we don't we don't do touching unless unless asked Thank you. It's about consent. Right? Thank you. No consent here. Don't touch me. I love him so much. Um, He just learned what that word meant and is now dropping it all the time. He's he's learning. The neurodivergent neurodivergent need to use the one word we've used for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks until we get sick of it. And then uh, then you, as you get squished again under your brother's weight, immediately feel him being lifted off you and fleety hasn't moved but he's like off 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 she's my future queen we don't squish the future queen of eustace um and that gets norna's attention uh okay fake <laughs> cool and he starts unleashing his sword no wait 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 it seems like there is some confusion here, and I think we need to we need to get the whole story. And <clears throat> actually, I want to get the whole story before I talk to Mother, because, look, I know that you have been traveling around with her, and you, you know, whatever, worship her, and want to be just like the Fae Blade, but... My whole life, I have wanted to be just like her. And I... <clears throat> I am tired of wanting that. So... Torna, Torna sits up at that and uh, looks down at his shoes and he goes, my shoe was untied, which is why I... That's the reason that this happened. And you, she, he looks at you, um, Cappy, and says, shouldn't want to be mom. Mom is kind of a bitch. And <laughs> you're better than she is. And everybody's different. To, 
so like <laughs> you have to play to your strengths that's what we tried to teach you growing up so clearly you need to come home and start to train with us again because this guy sucks I just like cut him off like before he even finishes that sentence and I just like run at him and like hug him and he's shocked for like half a second like he thought he was about to get a smack um <laughs> and then puts his <clears throat> arms around you I don't know what is going on right now but we can fix it you just have to let us I I don't know what we're what needs to be fixed I uh, uh, Norna from behind you goes so we'll go home and figure it out together without I don't know this thing and he's looking at he's just dead eye side eye just looking at him like looking at Fleety like this is not the vibe he wants his sister around so I think first of all that is rude okay you cannot ex you with we're going to be family excluding me is a crime <laughs> I'm going to take your sister with me to the Feywild where she will be treated much what? nicer um, than all of um, you have ever treated her and um, and Norna's like oh, getting ready to uh, okay yes, okay yes, okay my Fleety? sweet lady yes Oops. yes darling my love my my sugar little lumpy lump <laughs> lump lump that's not the word that I should use to describe you <laughs> hi <laughs> okay so I'm going to stop you with the whole I have our, I have not made any sort of decision and you wait, treating wait 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 what do you mean you haven't made any sort of decision I have made the decision to let you be near me yes I have and not just by me being here that you'll fall in love with it's fine we will be in love everything is going to be wonderful i have i don't die i have like ever, forever so eventually you're going to fall in love with me and therefore it's just proximity we're fine yes this works it's good you haven't decided it yet okay i well i gotta put a pin in that and we'll come back to that later because you right now you like and that's Norna looks at him and goes, um, I will kill you. Okay. Nobody's killing anybody. Let's just try and have a conversation. See, Fleety came to me to Fleety. claim. <laughs> what a stupid name. That's Torna. Would you rather I call him daddy? <laughs> <gasps> what? And that's immediately, get, you get hoisted out of his arms and he looks at you and he goes, you don't have these thoughts ever. And Norna looks at you and he goes, that was, that was, I need to bleach my ears. I need to I bleach mean, my ears. He is Daddy December. That's kind of his other name, so. And Fleety does this immaculate flourish and a bow he goes, not at your service. But yes, you, you can just told your brothers daddy. that you are uh, possibly engaged to Santa Claus. <laughs> yes, he's got, a, he's got a lot of toys. So the, the freaking reactions. <laughs> okay, so okay, so what I learned when Fleety came, he. I haven't Are come yet. To... Okay, enough of that for the okay, jail. Okay, fine. Yes, <laughs> right to jail. Okay, <laughs> right to jail. I, he goes I and he think... lays out this on your is, bed. This is not helping. None of you are helping right now. And so I really need you all to shut up for just a moment so I can tell you what happened. And maybe we can all figure out what's true 
and move forward. So we were out adventuring, trying to save the realm. When this person, My little sister, lady, decided to show up as a miniature dragon. That was very cool. But then I nearly died. And Lady the Tiny Dragon became Lady the Elf and Archfey. And Fleety told me that Mother had sold me while I was in the room and that he was coming to claim his prize. Now, I didn't say prize. I, I actually, I, I probably, you know, could... Um, maybe uh, watch a show about it and, and give you the quote, but yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> I would never. I'm offended. And then Anyways. he rolls over and he, he just kind of sulks, not looking at you. Go ahead. Uh, continue. I will give you credit for learning about consent, but but we need to continue. So Fleety came to claim me, said I was to be his bride. This was all news to me. Then he said- But you're said, not his bride. Okay. Not right now. Not no. ever. Oh, that's still a question, but- uh, No, wait, hang on. And then Norna's like turning turning on Fleety. No, there's no- And then like his other hand, his one finger is like no towards Fleety. The other one is no towards you. No, we don't. we don't approve of this. You don't get to decide. I get to decide. I get to decide. You're my baby sister, and that's an ick. I don't care what you think about my decisions, who to love. I'm, I'm not saying that that's, no, that's not that's not what I'm saying. I'm not. This is not some sort of confession or demonstration of feeling. Okay. Hey, what you I'm, said you love me, and that's that's all that matters. Anyways, okay, I let's get let's get me. past let's get past all of this and get to the point that I wanted to ask you about, which is when mother sold me, she did it so that she could save you, the two of you, and father. So if you, the two of you, were in the woods with mother. When that happened, and we're old enough to be adventuring with Mother when this happened, why do you not have a memory of this happening? Fleety, were they there? Oh, am I allowed to talk now? Yes. Yes, they were there fighting. Lorna? Were they there when the deal was made? No. And then Torna and Nona immediately, see? You... Your mother had, um, well, I mean, she'd gotten jettisoned back through a whole bunch of trees and such. It was very amusing. I thought she was dead, so I kind of just went and kicked her with my shoe a little. They were, well, what? look at them. They're very young. They were even more young. And, well, which, I don't know, they look the same. One of them was unconscious, and the other one was very, very, very red. Ah, uh, lots of blood. And your father was the only thing left between them and what they were fighting and, well. What were they fighting? <laughs> it had a lot of eyes. Kind of ball-like. A beholder? I don't know. 
We don't have them in the Feywild. Why was it in the Feywild? It wasn't. I'm just saying we don't have whatever that was in the Feywild, where I spend most of my time. Oh, okay, I'm a little bit confused, but I think we got the general gist of it. So, Norna, Torna, I am sorry. I was perhaps misled is a little bit strong, but there's it gets close. Please? Misled how? And you noticed um, they've changed. They've gone from playing around to uh real close down um misled how you didn't believe us about what we told you about how we lost our father about how torna almost died you don't trust us the people that have always had your back Oh, that always, we always no, have my back. No, you, and this is Norna uh, who takes over. No, you don't, you don't get to do this now. You're accusing us of not having your back when you don't even know how many nights I, you don't even know how many nights that I stayed up arguing with mom about you. You don't know that I got accepted into one of the best schools for heroes. And I said no because I didn't want to leave you with her. She's... I don't know what happened. But when she lost dad, she is... She left. She's not... She wasn't our mother anymore. And we had to raise you. And you have no idea what I gave up to do that. Just so you could leave us. And Torna kind of like, there's like a minute of like just rage. And he, uh, I don't, I want to go hit things. Um, yeah, fuck this. And then leaves. And, uh, Torna is sort of just standing there awkwardly for a moment before he says, I love you a lot, Capandra. You're my baby sister, and I will always fight for you. Just, I wish you had, like, talked to us about this and actually had a conversation with us instead of just immediately accusing us that we sold you to, I don't know, Ick over here, and, uh, yeah, I love you, but I don't want to talk about dad dying anymore, if that's okay. And, um, fuck that guy, as he points at the bed, uh, and he's gonna run after his brother. I feel like that could have gone better. Yeah. Yeah, it could have. Are you... You're sad. Um, and I don't know what to do to not make you sad. If I think you... the first thing would be for you to leave. Oh. Did I do something wrong? I didn't. I I can leave. I just I. If you could just tell me how to help. You can't help me right now. Okay. So I need you. To leave, because that is the thing that would actually help is you leaving right now. He looks stunned, hurt, uh, doesn't understand what's actually happening. And then he just 
isn't there anymore. And you're alone. Yeah, I think I just sit on the bed and put my head in my hands and and cry. Uh, from there, we jump back over to Sin, who heard a, well, had a an awkward encounter with a goddess and then heard a very gentle knock at your door. What do you do? Um, she'd kind of like blink out of a uh, trance and quickly look around and just a moment, like get her robe and uh, straighten up a little bit. It probably looks a little crazy. Um, and like straighten out her uh, gown and open the door. On the other side of the door is uh, Lady Orion standing tall, you know, uh, just as beautiful as ever. Pale gray skin is actually um, her skin is free of makeup today. Normally she's got the whole heavy makeup, dark black lips. Have um, I ever seen her clean faced before? Because I almost no. feel like she would, I wouldn't even recognize who she was. And she just kind of blink. Oh, and she's then... the features are very similar. You know who she is. Okay. It's just uh, you've never seen her without black lipstick or, you know, she, her hair is not actually in that nice, like long, that sleek bun that she always wears. It's, um, it's free. Pulled over one so one shoulder, um, still draped in her high necked dress with um, all of that fabric, but she's holding um, a very uh, ornate, delicate teacup uh, with liquid in it. And she, good, good morning. Ah, uh, it's mint. As she kind of holds it towards you. Uh, with some honey, I remember there being a tradition in Moon's Shadow. Uh, when you wish to apologize to someone, you do so with a cup of mint tea. You know, fresh start or all that. Or maybe perhaps I am remembering that incorrectly. As as she kind of drones, she's going to kind of like take a like an uncomfortable step back, but leave the door open. And she goes, uh, um, yeah, let me... Let me just uh, clear off a space real quick. And she's going to like knock all of her notes off of whatever like coffee table is there and uh, sit kind of stiffly at the table and just kind of like. She's standing just as awkwardly in the doorway for a second, kind of looks at the tea, looks at the the spot that you've cleared off, looks at you. uh is really doubting that maybe that was the tradition because normally it has to be accepted. So she walks over like and then... Sin has never even heard of this tradition because it was like <laughs> 700 years old. But she's just like, I, I, she loves tea so much. She has a tea holster with her own cups. So uh, give uh, me a history check. Okay. Like I'm willing to yes and this and be like, oh yeah. Oh, I you just give, give me a history know. check. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm going to roll it with physical dice this time. Is that a what, eight? eight? I thought it was a one, but it was a seven. I mean, you don't remember anyone saying anything of that, but your mom used to make you mint tea here and there. Particularly, the mint tea in Moon's Shadow is really good uh, because yeah. mint just grows like crazy. You can't get rid of it once you plant mint. Someone planted mint like ten thousand years ago. It's everywhere. It's a yeah. mint. It, the whole <laughs> town is just a mint bush. But it smells great, and that's why Eustace is such a big holiday. Holiday yeah. there. No. Um, she kind of walks forward very stiffly, places it on the table beside you, and um, I apologize, Sin. Um, I don't want to call you that name. If you can call me Aurora, I, I don't. I don't think Sin has explained to her everything that's happened. You've been you've only done bits and pieces. Right. So I don't think she's going to uh, try to lord dump her uh 
she'll just kind of be like, you, you may call me Aurora. I just, I'm still getting used to the sound of my own name. Which is a very horrible thing, I think, to experience. I, I'm not a violent person. And um, I was violent with you. I, I hadn't realized how unwell I actually was until that moment. Um, I'm. I have no words other than, I am appalled at my own actions. She's gonna kind of like insert in. I also apologize. I did not intend to keep you in the dark. It was completely unintentional. It, there was no malicious, maliciousness behind it. I think we were all just very confused and, and stressed. And a lot has happened in the last few days, few weeks that, well, I don't have to explain to you what it's like to have your world thrown upside down. Um, you, you have nothing to apologize for, uh, Aurora, uh, how would you interact with someone that had been locked away without contact of others? You, you, it's, it was very cruel what they did to you and I do not condone it nor support it. Ah, uh, thank you. Even for saying that I it's cruel what they're doing to you as well and if you don't see that I hope that one day you will come to understand that um I'm trying to understand it but the problem is I'm only getting half a story I don't know anything about Nyx other than what is taboo they're not doing this to me. They're not forcing this on me. This is somewhat self-inflicted, but only because I don't really understand. I, I didn't know you existed, and it kind of changes everything. Aurora, this should not be something that is self-inflicted. Taking a name such as Sin because you think helping whoever you helped doing whatever you did that made you call out for Nixaria is a sin. Was it a good thing that you did? Did you help the person that needed the help? Did you? I did. Then what sin did you, what sin did you do? She sits and she thinks how to kind of like explain, like come up with some kind of analogy, but she struggles because she isn't sure if there really is any kind of comparison. I guess I, I suppose I failed to put trust in my goddess and instead took a gift that was more tempting and easily given without considering what the cost might be. I, I did not trust the goddess that I have served my whole life. And I, by doing that, I have insulted her. I have betrayed her and I've been trying to remedy that, but she has been quiet and Nyx has been very loud and very patronizing on my tad. Gods don't normally answer prayers. At least you don't know when they do. So has Luna been quiet? Has she ever spoken to you before this? You have piqued Nyx's interest. For what or why, I don't know. But That's what I'm trying to find out actually and she like gestures to the pile of notes 
you see her scan over the the notes, look at the book. Uh, real quickly, I'm gonna roll something. Okay. She looks at that, the notes, and she goes, "You are trying to understand Nixaria by learning the language of the dead." Is that what this book is about? Well, <laughs> it's it's the only book I could borrow for the time being. I thought it would be one place to start, familiarize myself. I mean, it's a good place to start. Um, Nixaria does have more power in the dead than her sister does. Um, if you wanted to learn about Nixaria... I would start with maybe just basic things like um, edicts or. I think that's when it like clicks and she kind of like scoots up her chair. Could I bother you with a little primer, perhaps? I, of course you can. I am her high priestess. Uh, I I think that's when, uh, and we don't have to like role play the whole thing, but I think it would be like a montage of Sin asking very basic questions like edicts, anathemas, uh, rituals, yeah. what the, how, like how big was her cult, how important was it, and how much power when you say did it have, all that cult. Stuff. I don't mean cult in a culty no, no, way, no. I mean in a like a Greek when, Roman like, cult. When you say cult, like when you said that, mm -hmm. uh, she goes, I mean, I understand that religions can are cults in a sense, but Umbrafell, everyone here followed Nixaria. And um and you have this conversation with her, uh, mm -hmm. and at the end of it she she uh looks at you and she goes, I I have enjoyed this. I have not been able to teach in a very long time. Uh, I have something for you. Uh, perhaps it might be... I suppose think of it as a parting gift. Uh, and she hands to you um, a ring of spell slotting. So oh. this allows the wearer to cast a single spell at... Uh, the given level, given level, which for you because you're a warlock, I'm just gonna say up cats to whatever you're up your level you cast as, um, and you can only use it once per long rest. Uh, so she hands you over a silver ring with a bright blue lapis lazuli inlaid in it, and uh. She, she takes it off her own finger and and hands oh. it to you. This is this is oh. one of her rings that she's been wearing the whole time. Oh, this is so much. <laughs> I would like you to take it, if you would. It it it'll help uh, with your magic. Oh, I and can when, read. I can comprehend languages for a whole other hour now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it fully like when you put it on, you feel a little bit stronger. Does it? So um, it just gives me one additional spell slot. So instead of two, I have three. Or do I have to precast something into it? And you have store one it? additional spell spell slot. Dick. And I will post that stuff in the <gasps> chat for you. Um, oh, my mind just goes. Whoop. Yeah, <laughs> <Thanks> <laughs> so much clever now. She goes to the door, and uh, she goes. I don't think I will be coming with you when you leave. Oh, wait, do we have plans to leave? I feel like we haven't discussed what we were doing. I don't know if you plan on leaving or when. I just assume at some point you will. But this is your home, isn't it? Well, Umberfell is my home. And the lord you left with is your you there's a blush my betrothed i thought he was dead well he is dead now but oh 
Oh, that's a revelation. He's a vampire. Now. A above table, what is the a general opinion on vampires? Uh, not great. Not great at all. Oh, uh, okay. They... What you know about them is actually roll roll me roll me history. We'll see what you've read. I should have gotten efficient in history proficient in history is seventeen. Seventeen. Um, there are different kinds of vampires. Uh vampire spawn um are a lot weaker. They yeah. are made by lords and stuff like that. Uh if a vampire spawn makes another like a spawn it's not how it works they kind of become a mindless little zombie in a sense mm -hmm. um and when you were flying here you remember seeing uh, hordes of things running back and forth uh oh they have not had a very they've not really had a, a food source in a while so they oh. might not be well um vampires and vampire lords are people they right. have retain their sense of who they are um, as long as they're fed. Yeah. Uh, I guess so, at that revelation, she'll, she, her eyes will kind of like, like, oh, but she's going to be, t she's too polite to push. She looks at you and she goes, there were more people in the castle, apparently. And some of them would try to leave or others did rounds like well the few that you met on your first work time here uh he got stuck helping a few people back into the castle but um he's always had a way with magic that he can sustain himself she says. I will take your word for it. <laughs> he seems lovely. She's got this, like, grin. It's the grin that you get whenever you talk about your husband. Ah, uh, you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, she, excuse herself, leaves. Um. We're going to circle back again. I know we've just been... I'm just trying to finish off scenes here. Um, Rosalind, you're dressed. You're out of the tub. Is You've looked around like you're leaving to go to breakfast with everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, or you're going to soon. Uh, are you doing anything before you leave? Are you looking around? Is there is there anything that you are doing? Is I'm asking. Um... Not specifically. I think she would just take, you know, a few moments to really properly say goodbye to him, even though she doesn't exactly plan on leaving just yet, but just really like taking in the moment and what's like, your passive? It... <laughs> Fuck it by now. <laughs> Give me a second. Imagine it's passive not perception. terribly. Is He's buttoning 13. up his shirt. And uh, 13, okay. Uh, he's buttoning up his shirt. He's like, I don't know where you think you're going. We're going down together. So, oh. uh, like, laughing at you. Um, okay. That's fine. Um, with a 13 passive, uh, I'm going to say you saw, I mean, you more or less saw the room as it is. Um, but... Uh, you do see there's like a out of the corner of your eye you do see that there's like one of those like large uh school cork boards or whatever that just yeah. has tons of uh like a sheet draped over it so you can't see what it is just in the library um but he'll like he'll straighten out his his uh shirt put on his jacket and after you she's definitely going to come back up here to, to see what that court board is all about but yeah for now she'll let it go mm -hmm. um, uh, and you go with him to breakfast 
Oh, she's her, and he, holding his hand the entire oh, time. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you mean holding his hand? He's got his arm around your shoulders. Oh, well, there's that. <laughs> yeah, you've got your hand. Look, you're holding up like up like this, and he's got his hand here, uh, yeah. like, behind you. Uh, every now and then, like, he'll bump you just to be playful. Um, is there anything else that anyone is doing? Because I'm going to check in with... Uh, the other three that haven't been able to play this session before breakfast. Anything? Nothing. You're all good. Okay. I Give will the other tell ladies a chance. <laughs> Here's what you guys, Clover, Delphra, um, Anemone, as you guys gather to go to the, uh, the dining hall, um, what you see is, uh, your orc mommy, Diana. Um, she's just made it to the dining hall and she's not alone. Beside her is the other orc mommy in the castle. Uh, and this orc mommy number two or is dwarfs Diana in comparison. And she's pinned up against the wall currently uh yes. bright red suit so, like you you're looking you, you take this in for a second and you can see that she is not used to being in this position she's the other position she's the other the aggressor normally and just bright bright red uh she's as, the dom can can we insight check can we insight check this all three of us yes you can <laughs> please insight check this mm -hmm. situation here natural 20 on a anemone <laughs> nine natural 19 okay okay, okay, okay. About this more than anyone else. for 25 <laughs> okay you guys like for me Oh my god, all of you. You guys are going around the corner uh, and you see them and you kind of like just hide back so you can get this info. Uh, you're looking at this and Diana is doesn't know what to do with herself. She's <laughs> enjoying what's she's turned on. Like, yes, this is like, she's like, uh-huh. But also, what is this? Is this what I do to people? Um, and then you see, <laughs> you see, um, her name, because you've met her, you've heard her name before. Uh, let me just go Lady get it. Marigold. Yes, Lady, Lady Marigold. Marigold. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, you just see her kind of really, really gently take a finger and put it under her chin and uh, lean in and whisper something into yeah. uh, Diana's ear. And Diana just, you thought she was red before. There, There is no shade darker that she could be right now. And then she spots you and she goes, <clears throat> um, <laughs> th th thank you for showing me to the good talk and walks away <laughs> into the, into the dining room. <clears throat> and, uh, Lady Marigold looks at you, turns around, looks a little shocked for a second, turns around, looks at you guys and goes, <sighs> he's cute. I love she just him. gets a big thumbs up from the cat. The cat. I don't know if a cat up. can do that. She's cute. Who <laughs> yeah, said cute. she's cute? You say, you say that? Do you actually say that? Yep. Uh, Lady uh, oh. Lady Marigold looks at you and goes, I, she, I, she is she is very cute. As are you. I wouldn't be opposed. I'm just saying to a little fun later. Annie's going to be like, that's that that's great. I mean, fun for me is wrestling and you know, playing with swords. Uh you know what Lady I mean? Marigold, Raising. Lady Marigold comes in and puts an <laughs> arm around you. He goes, Wrestling we can do just a little bit in a nicer place, comfortable. Um, Maybe no, my room. No, you know what? I don't the mm, here's the thing. I don't two time with with you're you're taken. I'm taken. I'm taken. I'm I'm absolutely Oh, you you have Yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't have anyone. I was inviting you with us. Oh, second like... of all. You seem to misunderstand that one. Together, oh, okay. three of us. That would uh -huh. be a fun time. 
Second of all, kind of like I like sparring. Thing. Absolutely, I absolutely okay. love sparring. Uh, you know, it's good. I didn't realize you were taken. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hope you're kind of like slips in, and she's like, <laughs> "So let's chat." Yeah, she's so tall that she you you slip in there, and she just kind of pats your head, and she goes, "Oh, honey, I like him a little taller, at the very least." And uh, she'll take you in with her, like laughing, <laughs> but <laughs> she's like, uh, "I like." I'd like my women to be a little, well, durable. That's the word I'll use, durable. Um, and you guys all, you guys all congregate at breakfast? Um, as we all walk in, Anna, Anemone is going to like quickly, like, tap on to Delphra's shoulder and then with Clover on her side, but I'm not sure how this is going to play out and we'll go. Do you mind if I talk to you two for a second? Just just for a second. Just, mm -hmm. just for a little second. Sidebar. Okay. Sidebar. Sidebar. Okay. Um, great. So when she was saying wrestling, and was it wrestling as in like sparring wrestling? Because that's I think she uh, sex. Delphra just oh. starts laughing and she goes, My darling, she wanted to fuck you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm gonna roll to see how quiet you guys are being right now. She's not <laughs> being quiet whatsoever. Okay, <laughs> uh, from the table, Lady Marigold, no shame, goes, I did, yes. Oh, I um, was asking if you wanted to come and have sex with oh. me and Diana. Later tonight, <laughs> and, and Diana, <laughs> Diana chokes. Oh my god! Okay, like, <laughs> anemone is like I don't think anyone has seen anemone blush, but she is from the top of her forehead oh down god. to like her very fingers, like even her tattoos, just glowing like neon pink. And she's like, I, I've never done. You know, I'm just gonna go. I'm getting some potatoes. Potatoes. I'm getting potatoes. I'm getting yes. potatoes. Yes. Potatoes. I've That's never had sex. And then he's just screaming, potatoes. I'm a virgin. Potatoes. <laughs> the whole time. And uh, Lady Marigold at some point just, just passes you and goes, I am so sorry. That's okay. Um, it's all right. It's all right. It's just miscommunication. Usually, my my tribe and stuff. We we don't usually are. We're not that. We're not really that open, except for May. May I hit me? I uh, you know, I'm very open about this stuff. So it's okay. Um, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable, but if you have any questions, yeah, sure, absolutely. Actually, I do have questions, maybe, but later for some other time. Yes, in a more yeah. private place, you can come and ask me some questions because I have a feeling you don't. Uh, well, I think you need a lesson, perhaps. Uh oh, in 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 just what the anatomy can do for you. <laughs> it's I've lost her accent. It's fine. Okay. She's she's gonna be like, here's a mirror. Um <laughs> go <walk it> out. <laughs> and he's gonna... yourself with um Annie's like full on beat red, but then there's like a little bit suddenly she went and calmed down and she's like, you know, I could learn from this. I could use this. And automatically yeah. her mind starts yeah. starts calculating thoughts. She's like, you know what? I've seen the other girls use this, do this. Okay, I'm a little bit slow, but I'm fast enough to understand what's going on. Like, sure, yeah, we can totally talk. Yeah, we can totally Absolutely. talk about that. Yeah, let's just talk about it. Diana yeah. is hearing this conversation and it cannot seem to eat properly anymore is consistently choking on her food. Um, and that's not something you would expect from her as the captain, uh, of as the commander of your guard. Like she was, she's smooth as fuck normally. And she's just, I can't cover. <laughs> so I was just going to go. I don't think I'm to... hungry anymore. <clears throat> Delphine's just going to go up to Diana and give her like this large glass of cold ice water and just like 
pat her on the back while just giggling and walking away. She's just got she she's just sitting there holding it now, like I that this is happening. This is a thing that is happening. Um Roz, as you enter with the prince, uh he gets pulled aside by Galen, who wants to talk to him. And uh and he goes, um one second, I'll be right back if that's uh-huh. all right with you. No, it's okay. I'll be over here with my sisters. Not talking about you. (laughs) He beat red for a second there. Like, (laughs) don't, please. And then walks away because he's, you see him more shielding uh, Galen's ears than trying to like do anything else. Like, please don't ever hear anything about me in that sense (laughs) of the word. And Um, then you suddenly hear, and they suddenly hear from the background. A (laughs) tail Virgin, <laughs> <Vagina. laughs> that's merch potatoes virgin vagina just like in a line like the yeah. potatoes virgin vagina yeah. that's we need merch. that on a t-shirt for sure yep <laughs> i have a cray cut i will make this happen <laughs> next episode yeah. i have a blank yeah. shirt just somebody message it to me because I'm going to fr- freaking forget. Okay, I, on it I, right I, now. Next episode, I'm ready, I'm ready I will wear it. First channel. Shit. Potatoes, virgins, vaginas. Um, <laughs> She's, <laughs> and he's like, this, you just, he's panic, full panic. Like, yeah, but they go off to talk. Um, She did promise that she would ask about you guys using the library and all of that. Um, In that moment, before you get to turn to your sisters, Rosalind. Um, Lady Seraph appears in front of you. And she looks at you and she's... There's eye contact and she goes, If you hurt him, I will possess your body and jump us off a cliff. (laughs) <laughs> okay i'm not laughing she's not laughing katie's laughing um and no one will find your body again okay all i have to say to that mm. is if you had been there this morning you would know that is not my intent. Just making sure. <laughs> I'm not. I, honestly, if someone's going to get hurt, it's me. I agree. I don't mean by you, bitch. I also agree. And then there's a moment where she seems <laughs> to disappear. Um, And I need you to give me a wisdom saving throw. Of course. Why not? Absolutely. I feel like this is an important one. So where's my, what's my wisdom is plus one. Ah. It's fine. Fuck, I should have used it. I knew I should have used the damn physical life. You have life. advantage. Oh, I do. You're right. <gasps> okay. Yeah. Do you have one of these? Do I have one of what? Everyone has one of those. The, I uh, do. Uh, but it's okay. for, 19. um, 19. She has advantage because she drunk the ambrosia. So for this whole day, she has it. Oh, 19. That's right. 19. So you feel her jump inside you, and your hand begins to like go to smack yourself across the face. But then you feel good. Hmm. There's this just the feeling of you drinking that ambrosia all over again. And you see her get tossed out. And she looks shocked concerned insight for the rest of that um yeah you also have a bardic for next session yeah um okay so i have uh it's a good thing that i have advantage because um that was 15 still not 15. fantastic but it's still better than the seven that i got first time shocked concerned confused for a second and then that's a feeling she recognizes because of whatever the, magic yeah. was just used 
is something that she knows. And then she smiles and disappears. She's going to walk over to her sisters. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, if you want, that's where we can call it the tonight, guys, because we've gone a little over time. Yeah, um, it's fine. Sure. Good session. Uh, before we sign off, start. Mm -hmm. Let's do the thing one more time. What thing? What thing are you doing? Oh, okay. Right, uh, right, right. Doctors Without Borders. Oh, okay. <laughs> Right now, uh, some of us uh, from TTRPG TikTok, organized by Run DMG, are um, raising money for Doctors Without Borders to help the people of Gaza who are desperately in need of aid, particularly medical aid, which Doctors Without Borders can provide. We started out trying to raise fifteen hundred. We uh, reached our thirteen thousand dollar goal today and are going towards sixteen thousand right now which is completely amazing. And I am gobsmacked by the generosity of our community. It is truly heartwarming. Um, so you can donate at the link that uh, they put in the chat. Um, we are on opposing teams. I'm on the red team and Jess is on the green team. So, so obviously go green, but honestly, it doesn't matter. <laughs> just even if you don't want to name anybody, um, just if you could donate or uh, pass the link around. Mm -hmm. And there are some really great rewards there. So if you want to, you can get something for your donation too. Also, to. uh, rewards, if you are interested, is a session run by um, our uh, our tech guy tonight, uh, The Speed of Candy. Um, amazing DM. I play with him and he is uh, uh, phenomenal. Uh, June has also played with him. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I put up... Uh, character art i will draw your character if you pay a certain certain amount because apparently i can't talk today i'm sorry okay, you're fine <laughs> any so hoozles the, the fundraiser yeah, go goes until the end of january so uh that's how long you have to donate so please help us get to sixteen thousand. <clears throat> yeah um amazing i'm ice new stars i have been your shenanigan sovereign and all of the npcs uh star Hi, I'm Star. I go by Star Mama C on TikTok. You can also find me wherever you find podcasts because I am the host and creator and the person that does everything for Characters Without Stories, which is a podcast where I talk to people about characters they haven't had a chance to play yet. And um, so, yeah, Characters Without Stories, I'm practically everywhere at this point, so you'll be sure to find me. Um, and I'm going to pass it to GM of Revan. Hello, everybody. I'm GM of Revan. You can call me Anne. I am everywhere on the internet as GM of Revan. I make maps and I do things on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, I get to hang out with these lovely ladies on Saturdays where we get to play these amazing, wonderful characters that you just saw in the past couple of hours or so. Thanks for hanging out with us as we uh, dove into emotional damage and then uh, a little bit of humor towards the end of it um, brought by yours truly having said that <laughs> i will spin the wheel and give it to mama c oh that's me yeah that's you <laughs> oh shit hi i'm mama <laughs> Kali. um i am coming out of my rock you can find me at Mommy Kalik on most socials, uh, but also Goddess Teacup, my herbal spiritual apothecary that will be fully up and running by June. Currently, we are sharing uh, different types of herbs and how they can help you. And tomorrow we will be posting about our lavender uh, sandalwood uh, shower melt. So stay tuned, I guess. Um, I play Delphra, the winter ladron druid that uh, needs a leash. And I'll uh, hand it over to Lennon. Oh, me. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was the to do that. Um, <laughs> um, hi, At least it's not Spice just Juniper. me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, I'm Lennon and Spice or Juniper. You can find me on uh, TikTok and Blue Sky mostly. Tonight I played Clover, our Tabaxi Cleric. Um, 
And if you check my link tree, you can also find what else I'm in, which is mostly alternating every second Sunday um, on Shattered Tabletop Games. I play Alien and also uh, Naturally Shattered, which is a Shattered Dawn campaign. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pass to Scarlett. Hello, I'm Scarlet. I play Sin, the sad elf, and you can find me all over the internet at Scarlet64. I will be next online tomorrow as I run my Out of the Abyss campaign. Uh, and I just realized I have not done any prep, so woohoo! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, gonna be doing a lot of that tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Miss Katie. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Dungeon Mistress Katie on all of the internet spaces and things. Um, Next time I'm next time I'm on the internet, it'll be Tuesday on the same exact channel on the State of the Union Shadowrun campaign playing Claire McKenzie. Tonight I was Rosalind Alara with tears and all of the emotions. So So many emotions. So many emotions. Um within 15 minutes you made me cry. Thanks, Jeff. I'm sorry. It's no, it's You're okay. Speed it's running good. the crying. It was. It was <laughs> it was a lot. Um Star, have you gone? Yeah. No, you did. You went first. Okay. Has anybody uh I think that's I think we all did it. I think I think we did the thing. Okay, great. Okay, I love you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.